Appearances can be deceptive. Sometimes it's tricky to tell the difference between one face and another. On other occasions, not so tricky. Now imagine it's not a human face, but a fish. A salmon, to be precise. Norway wants to combat the invasive humpback species in favour of its own native salmon, which meant Dr Omar Richardson from Simula Consulting, working with Huawei, first had to find a way to distinguish one type of salmon from the other, and then work out how to isolate it. Artificial intelligence to tackle one salmon's artificial introduction. So, Huawei approached us that uh, because they've been working with Berlewog Hunting and Fishing Association to try to combat the rise of the humpback salmon, or pink salmon, as they're officially called. And essentially what's been going on is that since, I think, early 90s, late 90s, somewhere there, uh, the humpback salmon was artificially introduced in the Norwegian rivers. And whilst initially it didn't take, slowly the population had been growing over time, and because of climate change, things became uh, much more advantageous for the humpback salmon, and that allowed them to just take hold over the rivers more and more. So the population has since been growing quite a bit, especially in the last decade. And they are competing with resources with the Atlantic salmon, which is, well... The native salmon. The native salmon. Yeah. You know, and that Nor Norway, as a country, relies quite a bit on the Atlantic salmon, both for food and in terms of export. Mm. So uh, you really see that struggle in the rivers every summer, every summer that the humpback salmon is there. And what we've been working on with them is building a, an AI model, so a computer vision model, more precisely, that's able to distinguish between an Atlantic salmon, so the native species, and the humpback salmon, the invasive one. And how does it do that? How does it distinguish between the two? Yeah, so basically, uh, it works as an image classifier, the ones that you see on the internet, the ones that, I don't know, since the last 10 years or something, are more publicly available, right? So they can distinguish between, for instance, a cat and a dog, right? Uh, and that's because they have been trained on lots of images of cats and lots of images of dogs. And essentially, this works exactly the same. So it has seen tens of thousands of images of different species of fish, so the Atlantic salmon, the humpback salmon, but also Arctic char and smaller fish, and even things like otters that also make use of the same riverway. And that training has allowed it to, when it sees new images, live images of different types of fish, identify which fish it is and basically give an estimate of, uh, well, I just identified what type of fish it is. And then what does it do then? And, and what was the sort of specific role of Simula Consulting in this sort of coordinated approach? So we've worked together with the other partners in the project uh, on building the entire solutions, but our focus has been on the AI and the software backend, right? Mm -hmm. So this was training that computer vision model I just spoke of but also setting up the data processing pipeline, so making sure that all the images made it from the camera to the server, uh, being identified on to the cloud and then to the front end, uh, cool. and all the software that has to be built is to be associated there in the back end. Yeah. And then what happens to the humpback salmon as a result? I mean, you've identified it. Yes. Is it a, a, about data collection, or is it about action in the wake of the data collection? So, the humpback salmon itself gets separated from the Atlantic salmon through the underwater fish cage. And its very nature, what the edge power fish trap does is taking that Atlantic salmon and allowing it to swim onwards in the river and taking the humpback salmon and putting it in an underwater cage where it can be emptied uh, a few times per week by the fishermen that so live So it's filtered off. Exactly. It? So it's a filter that lives there. Yes. And then all of the data that's collected, that's presented in a front end, and then river managers are able to see, okay, well, not just how is this fish trap doing, but also uh, how many fish have I seen? Is mm. that different from other years or from last week? Or, uh, and trying to estimate the health of the river, in fact.